The following podcast is a next level production. Still can't believe this shit is legal. I locked up so many assholes for it back in the day. What the fuck did you say? That's uh, literally nothing. Jesus. How hard? What? How hard did Butcher suck your dick that you miss him that much? Hmm? His mouth must feel like a Hoover Deluxe. God, every single thing you say is so gross. He saved me, okay? More than once. So I owe him. Oh, bullshit. You're on a mission. You get the job done, okay? I stormed Normandy. I fought the Nazis. You want to know what I do when I'm sad or scared? Fucking nothing. Because I'm not a fucking pussy. You didn't storm shit. Your whole Marlboro Man act. It's fucking crap. And I... Oh... Panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about The Boys, Season 3, Episode 7, entitled Here Comes a Candle to Light You to Bed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is that in some... reference to Herogasm with all the people burned? I, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't figure it out. And I only watched the episode twice, but I, I, I don't, I, yeah, these. I think they're just trying to throw us off with these titles. I think so too. <laughs> I really do. It, it, it start, uh, when I started reading it, I thought it was like candle in the wind or something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <So>. John. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the boys season three, episode seven, here comes a candle to light you to bed. The synopsis is, did someone say birthday? Come celebrate at Buster Beavers with our new deluxe VIP birthday package with seating for up to 30 guests. 10 large two-topping pizzas, and 10 pitchers of your choice of soda. And, of course, a special birthday play starring Buster Beaver and his cast of furry forest friends, all for only $199.99 plus tax. Buster Beaver's Pizza, where kids make the rules. Okay, Black Noir really has put a shade on this episode because <laughs> such a crazy, yeah. wild episode. And I, I guess I, I was listening to TV Podcast Industries uh, a little bit talk about this episode, and mm. uh, or or no, they talked about Homelander, and that there's a very there's a Homelander episode, the like the last episode. I checked the Diabolical thing, like the last episode of Diabolical is a Homelander episode. So I meant to watch that. To see if it had anything to do with oh I forgot what's... about that I actually watched all of them in a, a like kind of like a fast pacing Jamie and I mm-hmm. were th- thinking about covering it but yeah 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 all of them were interesting shocking cartoons <laughs> right right and they're but, all in canon according to the showrunners yes so something I guess they're like I, said, I think there's something in that last episode I want to watch it I may try to watch it tonight to see if there's anything in it, and then I'll bring it up next next time we talk but. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it was so crazy, and I, I can't even. I wish I'd watched it a third time, but that stuff was just wild. I don't know. Yeah, his hallucinations, his craziness. You know, oh, the fact yeah. that part of his brain is missing. Um, you know, maybe that's what it is. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know, it, but we got to see, we got to see what we didn't see in the flashback secrets of Nicaragua, and they did it in a animated fashion so it wasn't quite as what's the word i'm searching for hideous uh brutal <laughs> yeah exactly um, violent as uh, but violent was, but honestly com- considering what we got last episode they probably did this due to filming issues during covid and all that stuff so mm-hmm. i wouldn't be surprised that was their way of doing things just to yeah. like hey we could just do it in cartoon form get these people get Lori holden to come in and do her voice Mm-hmm. over through zoom or something and that'll work out yeah yeah that's where we move right into our initial thoughts overall so initial thoughts as a whole what were your yeah, thoughts? just just crazy and i mean we got a lot of information in this episode and i loved it because we'll talk i'll get deeper into it but i loved you know normally i'm not big on you know show me don't tell me 
Yeah. You know, but listening to the legend to Paul Reiser as the legend talk about soldier boy and all that stuff, which we'll, like I said, we'll get to was yeah. just fascinating to me. It was just, it was amazing to hear him tell that stuff. And it, it didn't bother me that I was being, that all this exposition was just being rolled out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Especially as, you know, it's like, uh, when soldier boy was singing, <laughs> mm. He goes, Soldier Boy was this was to singing with pantyhose was to finger huffing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything was there for him, like talking about Soldier Boy, Soldier Boy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, my impression with this was all over the place, but at least we got some story backup or answers. As with Noir, well, he is messed up. We kind of figured that. Well, he's not exactly the Noir that we know from the comics. So, spoilers, if you actually read the comic, people, this is bad for you people. Because in the comic, basically, he was like a doppelganger for Homelander and took over. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to do that with this. So, yeah, I kind of like what we have now because it's kind of, like, interesting in a sense that he went from one team to go to a next. Mm -hmm. So, now he's kind of playing... Well, spoiler alert, we said spoilers in the beginning. Uh, mm. f- probably playing against father versus son at this point. Because at the very end, when uh, Soldier Boy states that, yo, he kind of gave a sperm donation at the very end for yep. cloning. And that's his son. And he was not. He basically, he he didn't want to interfere with Homelander at this point. I guess he yeah. found this new, uh, uh, we're going to get a tag team of Homelander and Soldier Boy, maybe. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's if that's the case or if they're going to do a twist on it and that that's the setup for Billy and Huey and him taking on Homelander. It's going to be interesting to see. The next episode, you know, th- this is this is the penultimate episode. The next one is the last one, for the you season. know. Yeah. Yeah, and so and so we're going to get some sort of resolution here whether it's and so that's like I, I the, the second time I watched it when I listened to that phone conversation I get like the like the first time I was kind of leaning towards, well, I guess Soldier Boy is turning his back on Huey and Billy at this point because he did kind of walk away from him. Mm-hmm. But then I started to think, well, what if they're doing a twist here where, you know, he's he's just yes, he is kind he is biologically Homelander's father. Correct. But this is kind of a twist of him taking him on. So we'll see the next episode. It might be his way of trying to get in underneath and do something to who knows, because he could regain his power in Vought if that were the case, Mm -hmm. if he destroys Homelander. Right. But also he might, since he doesn't like, we've already seen what he did to the twins at Herogasm. Right. And then we already saw what he did to uh, Crimson Countess. Mm Mm-hmm. And we know he's longing or looking after, looking for Black Noir. Yep. And then he went after the other one on his team as well. Mindstorm. Yeah. Yeah, Mindstorm. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's trying to go after each and every one, destroy them or get them out of the way. And Mm -hmm. then what he could do is take over for this particular team itself or take over Vought for himself. Mm -hmm. But that's just my speculating and my thoughts. A lot of the stuff that I liked within... The episode that we got answers to was Maeve being alive. So mm-hmm. you know, Homelander's literally holding her hostage, and I don't. I think it's in Vought Building, the the building where Vought is, and like mm-hmm. a, some sort of. But how would you? How do you hold somebody like that? That's got like Wonder Woman that has those powers and everything. Yeah, you know, in in a certain way, I don't know if maybe they have a way of dampening their powers, or if he's just you know he's just convinced her that she's you know, captured, you know, kind of a Stockholm syndrome kind of thing. Maybe, I don't know, but he's definitely got her, you know, and this is one of my points. So we'll go right into yeah. uh, Maeve, Maeve being alive. You know, I love that whole conversation they have where she, she sees that he's scared because he tells her yep. that soldier boy and Billy, they, uh, and Huey also, he, I, he doesn't mention Huey, but uh, they killed eight soups in that explosion at the house and the ones that are alive are powerless. Yep. So we, we understand now that's what soldier boys main thing is that he got from the Russians. If you think right. about it, he right. got exactly. you know, basically it, he goes, he destroys soups powers. Mm-hmm. Yep. But here's my problem. Here's my problem. Here's my hole mm-hmm. is 
wasn't A Train and Blue Hawk weren't they in the house when that happened, or was A Train no, out A-Train of the house? A Train was gone at that point. He was dragging. Okay. He was already dragging Blue Hawk. Okay, before before, before that the explosion. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. All right. Well, I thought I thought he had grabbed him after the explosion, so that's why I was I was confused. So I may have to watch it again to make it sure. It was that either I- just as the explosion was happening, or it was mm-hmm. going to happen, and he was long gone okay. because of his okay. power. That could have been, yeah, that that could be, you know. But then we get obviously we get the reveal in, in this episode that oh, they Adrian. gave him yeah. They gave him Blue Hawk's heart, and <laughs> now he's he's back to he's back to being able to run and he doesn't have any any problems again. He's got all his powers, but he has this oh, racist yeah. guy's heart. So that's gonna be an interesting psychological twist. For oh, he's gonna go through a lot with that mentally. That's gonna mess him up big time. Mm-hmm. He's like, I got this racist bigot idiot's heart in me yeah. now and he's a soup but that's the only way he's able to handle and have his powers at that point mm-hmm. right right one other point that i had was just more of soldier boy and his crazy antics like mm-hmm. with, with the priest and the nun just taking him out because he's just so he's his ptsd and not able to trust anybody well, no, they they attacked him. Mindstorm had definitely brainwashed. Like I, I, I'm convinced that that Mindstorm had brainwashed them because that nun attacks Huey and starts At biting one point, him. Yeah, you know. He, and so I think I think I think he was correct in what in what his assumption was. I'm not agreeing with what he did. Now yeah. I still think it was it was outrageous. But he yeah. did he did explain to Huey. He said, "No, this is Mindstorm's mo. This is what he does. Is he gets regular people. He brainwashes them to attack us. So we've got to mm. kill them before they attack us. And that's when you know she's biting Huey and Soldier Boy's got the gun and he's trying to and he and he kills her. But man, ah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and that, we find out that Mindstorm is bipolar, and mm-hmm. the way for them to track him is to figure out where he's getting his lithium. I love that. I I love that 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 through that whole conversation, you know, with Paul Reiser. It, and again, I loved getting back the the legend because we the were legend, hoping yeah. to. I was hoping to see him again, <laughs> and we got to. And we learned that all that stuff that that opening scene in the bedroom mm-hmm. where he's ruining the sheets and he's got those old prostitutes in <laughs> they there. Were prostitutes. Those are the cleaning um, people. <laughs> oh, the cleaning people. Okay, still the older the older ladies. You know that he's he's in there. He's in there with, and it just it was. He goes, oh, well, we got the loop. Why? Because I need the loop. Because, you know, they're, they're really good in the sack as they get older, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, but yeah. you, you need – I was like, oh, my God, dude, really? Yeah. Uh, and, then, of course, the legend turns – he wakes, he walks into it. He goes, oh, man, this room has seen two Jacqueline's, Smith <laughs> and Bissette. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was great. That was great. I love – and, you know, this is where we get this scene where, there were, you know, Billy comes in and he's got blood. Oh, no, that was the previous one. But he, yeah. he comes in. And he's he's checking all these off the grid cabins that Soldier Boy has been telling about where Mindstorm might be, yeah. and then they finally get the reveal from the legend that oh no he's bipolar and he has to have lithium, which that's super. That means his his bipolar is really really bad if he's on lithium. Oh yeah, that's a heavy heavy drug. Well, so they start be- you off on lithium. They actually start you off on lithium. There are other medications out okay. now, verbally uh, ready. I know through family that has the same issues in their lives mm-hmm. i'm not saying who but i know for a fact that you know somebody i knew who was related to me had to start on lithium and then okay. after a while they moved them differently so he might have been using lithium for years but it kind of lost its effects yeah maybe due to compound v in his system yeah but still they're able to track him down to which cabin he's in by his prescription by finding this prescription which i thought was pretty cool that is pretty cool yeah. And also on top of that, uh, Butcher getting manipulated by him as well. And we get to see Butcher's past through his eyes and his nightmare, mm-hmm. which is very interesting. I, I thought that was uh, a cool take because there's a lot of stuff we didn't realize about Billy. We only heard stories or slight stories or some flashbacks here and there. But with this mm-hmm. one, it was a whole flashback about his brother Basically, he saw himself as his father towards his brother at the very end, which was terrible. Yeah, it was it was really it was one of those things. And I noticed on the second watch was we kept getting glimpses of the gun, but not seeing the whole scene until the end of the episode. And but but, but every time he would go into one of those flashbacks, there would be a point where you would see a flashback of the gun. 
Yes. And I never, and I didn't, like I said, I didn't pick that up until the second viewing when I kept seeing that, that they were foreshadowing what we were going to see at the end with his brother killing himself. So, mm. yeah. I kind of figured out exactly where he used to live and why he is. Well, Butcher is a West Ham United fan, just like myself. But since he is English, and he, he that means he he lived on the East End of London, and that's ah. an, that's uh, London East uh, East End Londoners' favorite team, soccer team, and uh, they're basically the underdogs of British sh- soccer. But I'm a I'm a Hammers fan, just like uh, Butcher is. But I'm do that's because I love Iron Maiden, and I'm just into all that stuff, and. You know, I, I root for the underdog as well, underdogs as well, but yeah, so it, it tells me where he lived in London at that point. Nice, so I thought that was nice. pretty cool because they had the whole flag up in the back, and I was like, "That's mm-hmm. so West Ham United." Oh, <laughs> very nice, very nice. <laughs> well, apparently in this uh, episode, Annie, we know now that Annie can pound her liquor <laughs> like yeah. it was water. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah, that was from Iowa. Uh, was she was with, you know <laughs> she's able to do that because she grew up on it. Yeah, I love that scene between her and Kimiko and then Frenchie later on where when Kimiko is convincing her to to give her, you know, Powers. the permanent the permanent compound V and I she she wants to be super again even though she knows, you know, that she's going to go back to being this this same Killer. way where she this well this 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 way of not feeling is what it's what it sounded like like she said she couldn't feel Frenchie's arms properly because mm. of the, the the powers that she had but we see her get that back at the end because you know she starts healing again mm-hmm. and we see when the when it happens so uh, it's just gonna be again that's one of those i loved though that, like them reading that that text from her and her telling them that this is something she's choosing this time she's not being you know it's not being forced on her she's exactly. choosing it this time so yeah also talk about frenchy apparently he's very creative when he uh when he's high so mm-hmm. him and uh, Mother's Milk sitting there, and he realized about the the vapor and how to stop Soldier Boy. Yeah, yeah, and we see that in the in the in the animated flashback that it's got to be actually administered through his face. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to put some sort of covering on him, and that's what Frenchie figured out. In, in his, I'm assuming that's what he figured out is that it's, is how the drug, how the, the gas has to be administered. Because remember when Marvin tried it in the house, he just pick, kind of picked up the thing and threw it away. You know, like it didn't bother him at all. So I thought that was, yeah, that's another a very, very cool thought. Um, one of the things that came up with that Maeve, that whole Maeve interaction in Homelander was he tells her that even if she dies, he's going to harvest her eggs and his sperm to make to make a child from yeah. from them, which is just creepy and weird. Well, uh, I, I I wouldn't put it past him. That was the first thing I thought of because he even stated it's not against you. I respect you and your wishes. I wouldn't push myself onto you. Right. Oh, I'm like okay. In a sick way, he's saying it. But if something happens to her, meaning that if she gets killed, he has a way to procreate and create mm-hmm. another child, or if not a super child, even big better than his son already that he had with a human. Yeah, a yeah. regular human, I should say. Also, uh, t- let's talk about the the V twenty four. Now okay. we know Annie states to Butcher saying that it's lethal and deadly. You know, you could die from it after four to five. Doses. Right, three to three to five doses, and so we know. And this is—I was trying to work this out in my head. How many we know times that, did he take it? <laughs> yeah, we know that Butcher has taken it at least three times. Yes, because we've seen him. We saw him take. He took it the first time when he killed Gunpowder, and mm-hmm. then we saw him take it there in the bathroom. In the bathroom, and then they, and then he took it in the woods with mm-hmm. Huey. So there's definitely three times at least that Butcher's taking it, and maybe four. Already and no, and, uh, wasn't it in Russia too when he lifted the door off as well? For yeah, I'm not sure. That's that's the one that I'm not sure the timing of. I'm not okay. sure the timing of that one. If that was the bathroom one, no, the bathroom one was when he was at uh, the house with the kid. No, he didn't take it there. He was just suffering the effects of. It. He was just oh, throwing it. Okay, I don't yeah. think he took it there. I got you. But I, there was there was that scene in in some sort of a locker room or something, and that may have been in Russia. That might have and been. So, yeah. Yeah, so I so you know Huey's taking it at least twice. Twice, yep. Maybe three times. Butcher's taking it at least three times, maybe four. Mm-hmm. So I'm not like I said, we may get an exact count in the next in the next episode because Annie did say she's going to keep trying to call him. And I loved. I, I don't want us to to stop talking about this, but real quick because we we see Huey's kind of redemption. He's coming back. 
He's mm. come back because he says that to Mindstorm. He says, I don't want to be this person who is, you know, he saves, he says, I saved your life. I don't want to be this person who like what Butcher is doing. He said, I don't want to be that. I yeah. want to, I want to get my girlfriend back. I want to get, I want to be a good person again. And I thought that was really great to see that mm-hmm. from him. And the fact that he brought all those extra clothes, you know, <laughs> uh, and, and so I don't know. I wondered, this is what I wondered on my second watch is if he had planned all along to Probably. zap well, Mindstorm. He- Probably because he knows Butcher and he knows how crazy Soldier Boy is. <laughs> right. And so he always planned to I think that I think you're I think you've talked me into it that he, I think he always planned to zap Mindstorm out of there. Of course, unfortunately, they didn't go far enough away because Soldier Boy was able to find him. Yeah. And then he throws the, the knife into Mindstorm's eye and then he just shoots him in the head. Hmm. Which ugh. Yeah. Uh, uh, that again, shield just, to the head, yeah, for yeah, with Mindstorm. <laughs> mm-hmm. He went all cap America crazy yeah know. yeah exactly <laughs> um but i did like i said i did love it i did love that we were starting to see this redemption arc and we're also starting to see a little bit from billy because you know there at the end when he comes out when when he comes out of it mm-hmm. and he hears the voice of and this is where i wasn't kind of i was i was kind of unclear about this is probably this might have been mindstorm kind of playing with him in a way because he comes out and he says you know all these people are dead because of you Mm-hmm. Becca's dead because of you. Yep. And Huey's going to be dead because of you. And so we see him when he comes out of it and he says, I'm sorry yes, to he Huey, does. Yeah. Uh, which I thought was just, was just wonderful. So again, maybe we're starting to see a little bit of Billy changing his but, ways. But I, yeah. yeah. But again, the next episode is going to be really, and it's uh, now we got to wait however <laughs> long for season uh, four. Well, we're know. doing this on a uh, Tuesday. So we got a few days. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. I mean, to wait for season four after we get the oh, last episode. Yeah, here. the last episode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that's all I would say was. Um, so, yeah, it, it was. That was really, really good. Did you notice though in the woods as they were walking after they took the compound or the uh, V twenty four? Him, you know, Huey points out the ear goo coming yeah, out that, of their their he, their ears. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, you got some goo in your ear. That yeah. green stuff. You know, it's like the t- Ninja Turtle slime coming out <laughs> yeah. of your ears. But he, uh, Huey's forearm and his right forearm was glowing as they were yes. walking. So yeah. I'm curious if this further mutates them in mm-hmm. some way. And what if it doesn't kill them, does it just mutate them or forces them to well, I wonder keep if their powers? I, yeah, well, I wonder if the only way they're going to be able to not die because they've taken so many doses of it already is if they're going to have to get permanent they're going to have to get the permanent v correct yeah you know and it did look like she when she was shooting up kimiko there was still some more of it and you notice the difference in color right the green the green is the 24 and the blue is the permanent yes so so i think there there might be a possibility of we might see huey and butcher have to get permanent which, powers. which would make Annie uneasy about it, and mm-hmm. Butcher will hate himself even more so. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's a lot going on. There was something that I picked out, too, when they were talking at the very end when Annie called Butcher. I forget where whose house they were. Were they in the Legends? Or whose place was I'm it? I'm not was sure. Was it a cabin? Uh, they were still at Mindstorms. I think they were still at Mindstorms. It was a house cabin okay. at that point. Yeah, at his cabin. I think that's they were maybe trying to look for evidence of of where. I don't know. I, I got to watch the episode again, but oh. I know they were they were somewhere. You're right. They were somewhere off the grid, and it may have been Mindstorms' cabin. There, there was a cool poster in the background because obviously they made movies of these heroes back then, mm-hmm. and there was one from Crimson Countess, and it said oh. "Whiskey Sunshine" in the back. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool. I, I, I hope people could check that out and see that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to point that out. Yeah. We didn't talk much about Noir's hallucination yet. We talked a little bit about it, talked yeah. kind of around it. But one of the things I don't want us to skip over is the fact that, you know, there at the end, we get the reveal that, that you know, Stan Edgar did okay Noir doing it. But it really was, it was, it was kind of Noir's plan because yes. Stan Edgar says, don't tell me what you're going to do. I want to have deniability on it. He said, I just want you to know you've got my blessing basically. Mm -hmm. And so that was really cool. Cause then one of the little animals said, it's time to finish what you started. Yep. And that's when we see Noir walk off. And uh, so I think there's going to be a confrontation between Between Noir and and Soldier Soldier Boy. Boy. Yeah. Yeah. 
And one of those scenes too, the the when he was having a discussion, I guess it would have been in Vought building or something, and then that's when Soldier Boy snaps and starts beating on him and mm-hmm. this is in cartoon form and oh he was late no he was late to he, he was, was late. late to the meeting and because soldier boy had taken the part uh had had had, had got him uh axed from the axel foley, foley movie yeah, part, obviously yeah, yeah. the beverly hills cop which yep. i thought was a great reference to to with eddie murphy and, and yep. beverly hills cop and soldier boy saying you're not funny you know and then he just starts <laughs> wailing on him like yeah. It's just oh, oh but and, even still, we see the head bashing in mm-hmm. Nicaragua. So that's something that we kind of looked at when we saw they got hit in Nicaragua. We thought, oh, they got bombed or something, or we didn't think it was Soldier Boy that did all this stuff. So right, right. At this we point, find out right that yeah, it was their attack on Soldier Boy that caused him this distress, and basically, mm-hmm. Soldier Boy like caved in his brain. Hence yep. why he has. All those, you know, that the big, I, I, I guess his the, his skull was impacted so much. He's got an indentation. His face is all messed up. His eye. He mm-hmm. looks like something out of Snake Eyes from GI Joe. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then we, that's where we see in the in in that cartoon flashback, we see Crimson. I think it was Crimson Countess jump on his back and mm. put that bag over oh, his, his head, head that had the yep. that had the gas in it. So we realize that okay, that's how you've got to administer it's got to be directly onto his face, basically. So yeah, it's gonna be this next episode is gonna be wild. I don't know. It's gonna be great. I, I can't wait for it. Friday can't come soon enough. <laughs> well also there was issues with Noir in the very uh, what during that whole conversations with the cartoons. He had issues from when he was a kid. Apparently there was mm-hmm. an issue uh, was it in Nicaragua and uh, the Hard Rock Cafe massacre? And no, then, I don't think it was that in Nicaragua. I think I, I think what they're saying is that, that he's been he's been kind of traumatized his whole life. They said the the seventh grade erection yep. got him through that 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 thing, and so he's been seeing these hallucinations for a while, a long time. And, it's and just, yeah, the, yeah. And the Hard Rock Cafe massacre must be something we haven't seen yet. Yeah, that had to be at, at a time when he was an adult. So, I would think so. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. when he was part of the seven. Yeah. Um, let's see, Marvin, we haven't talked about Marvin yet <laughs> and his ex's husband, you know, oh. that was that whole conversation they had when she comes back from the Homelander rally. And then, you know, I, I, Marvin's a big guy, but that he didn't deserve. Like, yeah. I don't know. Beat him I went down. back and forth. He, yeah. He hit him really hard to the point where it knocked him down and stuff. And so I don't know if we're going to get some fallout from that, but of course the daughter and the mother see him. Well, the daughter it. definitely was scarred at that point. She was mm-hmm. afraid you could tell yeah. of her own father. And I think that's what really upset him more than anything. Yeah. And you know, the, the remark, the guy was out of line. I don't know if he deserved that big of a punch, but he was definitely out of line in his comment. And that one scene with the deep and his wife, try him, and then his wife leaving because he was trying to have uh, a threesome with the, uh, <laughs> with octopus. the octopus. Yeah, uh, yeah. and I, I guess her name's Ambrosius, <laughs> and or Ambrosius, and she, <laughs> and it's like it, it's like she's completely against it and leaves, and she's like leaving, and because he yells out, "She's a mollusk and she has feelings." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. this is like the second time we've seen him with an octopus around mm-hmm. his crotch. And funny yeah. enough, apparently a lot of fandom that's out there, or even some of the people that have watched this that are really against the show, that was their issue for Herogasm. Not the guy with the big squirmy penis. Yeah, it was oh. the, the... Well, you know, they put it... We got another one of those... I got it written out here. And I'll, I'll say it here in a second. We, one of those crazy title cards at the beginning that said, this series deals with sensitive issues, including death by suicide, and contains scenes that could be sexual, graphic, or taboo in nature. No living people or animals were harmed or coerced. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Yeah. So just like last week, we got one of these title cards kind of saying, hey, hey, you know, don't take this so seriously. You know, yeah. calm down. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. I think a lot of people are getting to the point, well, there's no rating on this. Honestly, it's MA, mature. Right, so if 16 you're not mature, plus. Yeah. If you're not mature enough to watch this, why are you watching it if you can't, un- you know, take, it's like, all right, you don't like it, don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it's like the Howard Stern thing. I just want to see what he has to say next. I just want to see what they have to do next. I can yeah. do what they did last. Exactly. But I, I was a little confused about the Soldier Boy hearing voices. I thought maybe at first it was Mindstorm oh. playing with his mind, but then Billy was pretty sure it's just because he's smoking so much weed, and because Billy's Billy's worried that he's gonna Hulk, you know, Hulk out. 
sometime <laughs> and uh, and go nuclear on him again. But because uh, that's every time he hears that Russian pop music, he starts to he goes nuclear. So well, that's a way to use him as a weapon <laughs> to trigger mm-hmm. it against people if you wanted to. There's one quote that I just love from this, uh, and that would be Soldier Boy, and it's when Huey was getting all hysterical about Butcher, and he goes, oh, what, does he suck you so well? Blah, 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 just like going on and on. But not that one. He goes, if you're going to be hysterical, I'm going to slap you like Connery. <laughs> That was great, and I loved I loved the one from Huey where where he's talking to to uh, Butcher and he says, "So just to recap, he's radioactive, highly traumatized, and heavily self medicated. Feels good. This feels right. Yeah, yeah. So that was, <laughs> he's he's heavily self medicated. <laughs> oh yeah, very much, very much. And the only other quote that I have is the one from the legend where he's talking about Soldier Boy, and he says, "Yeah, he did two weeks after D Day for the photo op." He sprayed a fire hose in Birmingham, some target practice at Kent State. There was there were rumors about Dealey Plaza. So we see all these things, all these racist moments uh, yeah. in history that Soldier Boy was was part of, as I thought was interesting. Yeah, it, there's always some sort of character that's like that, but yeah. I, I just accept it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I just love that. And there were rumors about Dealey Plaza. So Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, I know. <laughs> all right. So uh we didn't um, get any uh, any feedback as far as like email, audio feedback, no Facebook feedback. Sorry, fa- uh, panelists, we didn't really get anything out there, but we're going to have it this week for the very last episode. So if you guys want to, we will definitely put an image so that way you guys to uh, put your comments below. Same thing with Instagram and Twitter. We'll get those out to you. But YouTube, apparently we got YouTube feedback. Yeah. Yeah. About, so, our, about our coverage from, from season two, episode seven. <laughs> yeah, which is interesting. So at least, and it was days ago. So not, not months or years. This is like days. Right. So uh, Maria Nacho says about our coverage of the boys, season two, episode seven, Butcher, Baker, Candlestick Maker. And she goes, we, we see how Queen Maeve, she knows how to relieve or drown her sorrow with lots of men. Well, that was yep. the truth during that episode, obviously. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I have to go back and rewatch that, but I do remember that scene of her with all the men and women. Yep. So she she was having quite a party, and she was having a huge party. You know, we had that moment between her and Butcher in the last in two episodes ago, mm-hmm. where they both admitted that they hadn't they'd been they'd stopped drinking and for a long period of time, and then suddenly, you know, they're they're drinking again. So yeah, yeah, that might have riled it, or maybe that's where uh, Marie referenced that for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, on to uh, podcast recommendations, I guess. Um, I, you know, the, the same ones that uh, I don't want to mention the same ones that I've mentioned before, but, uh, uh, I did listen to a lot of TV podcast industries coverage of Ms. Marvel and the boys, the, the episodes that we've already covered. Those guys do a great job, no matter whether it's two of them or three of them. So I, I highly recommend TV podcast industries and anything they put out. Those guys, they're putting out content. They're actually doing three right now. I believe they're doing the Umbrella Academy. Oh, now Ms. Marvel, Ms. Oh. Marvel, and I think so. Yeah, I haven't looked too closely at the feed because I haven't been watching Umbrella oh, okay. Academy yet. But uh, I think they're doing all three at oh. the moment. So I, I get was a- just listening to Hero Ga- their coverage on Hero Gasm. So Derek had mentioned that they were going to do it within the next month. Right. But I okay. don't know if that was so last maybe they month's haven't episode. Done- <laughs> yeah. So maybe they haven't done. Maybe they haven't actually done Umbrella Academy yet. Okay, that's cool. But uh, always, and you know, Strange Indeed is going to be wrapping up their their coverage of stranger things season four i send voicemails to them pretty regularly and uh, then this week i may try to get one into run for your lives as well so we'll see what if I can. movie are they covering it this week they are covering bird box this week i haven't ah. watched that i haven't watched that since netflix released it you know four Same years here. ago yeah so uh, so i may i may try to do that after we get done here tonight to uh, see if i can squeeze it in because i think they're doing they are actually going to be together in real life daphne and Pake tomorrow Huh. Uh, I, hope, I hope this isn't. Uh, hope this doesn't spoil anything. This is it's not uh-huh. supposed to be told, but they will actually be together for in real life to do their feedback portion of Bird Box. So, oh, interesting. You know, cool. you know they record. They record their. They record themselves doing the 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 movie, and then they they do the feedback. The feedback at a later time. time. Yep. Mm-hmm. You also, I agree with this, Wilhelm's uh, Father's Day podcast with the return of Kristen. So, yeah, I agree with that. Plus, uh, they're talking about having Lost We Have to Go Back come back as well. Yes, hopefully that'll come back. And that's another one that I send 
regular voicemails too. So, and I'm pretty sure after Strange Indeed finishes Stranger Things, they're going to be covering Umbrella Academy just like we are and TV podcast industries. So, yeah. you'll have all three at the same time, most likely at that point, yeah. because we're finishing up the boys this week. Uh, coming up, we're probably following up with uh, Miss Marvel, and then we'll go into. Uh, the Umbrella Academy, but before that, we'll probably do Thor: Love and Thunder just for fun. Just our first impressions and thoughts. To I'm not going to go see it multiple times, but yeah, when I could remember and have a good time with it. And then, uh, yeah, we'll do Umbrella Academy, and hopefully that will lead us into August, where we get more stuff. Where Invincible will be there as well as uh, She Hulk. She Hulk. Yep. Yep. So we're we're moving l- right along. They really wanted to fill us with a lot of media content this year. <laughs> yes, they did. So, but uh, with that, we'll we'll move right along into uh, how people could submit their feedback, so that way we could get it out there for you guys, just Absolutely. like we do with Marie. Absolutely. Do you want me to start? Yep. As always, we can be heard on whatever podcast player of choice you choose, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or any of them that are out there. I think there's a whole bunch of, of podcast players. I use Apple Podcasts just because I have an iPhone. But hey, whatever you want to do, if you can give us a rating or review on there, we would love to read that and give you a shout out here on the podcast. Exactly. You could also check out our, our website, which would be panels to pixelspodcast.com. Still currently working on it. I'm not saying I'm not. I am working on it. <laughs> so we'll get that out to you soon. We have a Facebook group, which is just facebook.com slash panels to pixels. The three words just spelled out there in letters, panels to pixels. And we are on Twitter and we could be found at panels to pixels. That's panels and the number two in pixels. We have an email address, which is panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The T-O is spelled out right there in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. You can find us on YouTube, and you, all you have to do is search Panels to Pixels Podcast. If you do the search, we'll come up. You could actually see our artwork from our podcast on your player of choice, but on the actual YouTube channel, on your Apple TV or whatever, Roku, whatever device you're using. If you like the channel or if you like to listen to the podcast at times with the TV or your surround sound, that's the best way. Just subscribe, give a thumbs up. You'll be notified when there's new content. Uh, please do the subscription. It'd be awesome if you did. I intend on putting more YouTube videos if we get more celebrity guests to interview. I'm looking for it. I'm submitting a lot out there right now. I'm getting a few bites, but you know, as soon as a video comes and we have that, we're going to put it out there as well as on the podcast, but you could actually see us and that yeah. would be fun too. Very cool. We are on Instagram. We are on the gram, as the kids are calling it nowadays. Uh, we are at Panels Two Pixels Podcast. That's spelled out all in words. I know it's kind of long. Panels Two Pixels Podcast. There on Instagram. And we encourage you all to listen to the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. We highly recommend them. Wilhelm, obviously, we mentioned it with uh, Ben and his. Uh, what what would you call it? Top fives of he specific does, he, media. He does a top five, and he'll, he'll get uh, he'll get a celebrity or he'll get a, a guest a guest host in there to do top fives. I've done I've done top five western movies with him, yeah. and uh, I think we did top five war movies. I, I think I did top five war movies with him as well. So yeah, I did a couple myself too. So you could check those out. He has celebrity interviews too. It's all in one particular podcast. You have the Melting Pat Podcast Zero, and so much more. So all you have to do is go to nextlevelradioonline.com and check them all out there. So coming up next, next um, week. Coming up next, uh, gosh, the what's, the, what's the order that we're going to do this in? We got Ms. Marvel. We got the penultimate episode of Ms. Marvel is coming out this week, episode five. We got the, the, the season finale of The Boys coming out this week. So we got a bunch coming up. Like Mark said earlier, we got Thor, Love, and Thunder coming out and uh, just – a lot of content going to be coming your way from Panels to Pixels. Yeah, so just look out on all the social medias uh, and seeing what exactly we're doing right next and then and then submit your comments below. And where else can listeners hear us? Well, I submit, as I said earlier, I submit voicemails to various podcasts that uh, that I, I follow and listen to, and they usually play there so you can hear my voice on uh, various other podcasts. Awesome. Uh, you could hear me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and that could be found on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. There, I cover action, adventure, fantasy, suspense, and thriller films. Basically, anything to get your adrenaline going. I think the last episode I put up was Top Gun Maverick. So that was a uh, 
co-podcast with Watched It in the 80s, as well as, as well as Adrenaline. So it's the same podcast on both. So that way we're open to two different people's listeners at the same time, opening up our crowds. Next up after that will be Contact with me and Lizzie. And Yay. we cover Contact uh, with Jodie Foster. So for a two and a half hour movie, we podcasted for two and a half hours. Uh, but we covered a lot, which was pretty cool. It was a very interesting uh, podcast. After that, you'll get The Angry Red Planet, which obviously I'll be probably recording with Jerry sometime this week as well. So so keep your eyes and your ears checked out for that when you're checking out on the uh, podcast Players of Choice when they do pop up. Or if you see that it's uh, actually posted on the Facebook page, which would be facebook.com slash Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. So just check those out when you can. Yeah, well, that was our coverage for The Boys, Season 3, Episode 7. Uh, I think we covered it in-depthly this time. <laughs> <laughs> Did pretty good. Did pretty good, I think. I hope you guys liked it. So uh, I'll let you guys know, same podcast, different panel, different pixel. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night. Good night.